Sam is the studio lead of Suho Studio, who's the creators of the 10 Star Home project. Since joining the Suho team at the beginning of 2019, Sam's role on the 10 Star Home project has been to aid in project delivery, as well as complete the interior design. Um, he's been working closely with the construction team on site to ensure that the atypical construction details required to achieve this particular outcome are both buildable and meet the strict requirements of the design that they've set. So, welcome, Sam. So yes, Suho have been working on this 10-star home for a little while now. I joined the team partway through the project, so it was a bit of a steep learning curve for me. I've got a background in commercial architecture and sort of that high-end, bog-standard residential stuff. Um, so while the principles are familiar to me because I've trained in that stuff and read about it and whatever, it has been a steep learning curve, but I'm part of an excellent team that knows what they're doing, so that's been really good. Um, so just quickly, this house is located in Woodford. Um, it's currently under construction, which is why you're only seeing renders of it. Um, it's in Woodford where the old McGill Training Centre used to be and the Black Hill Pony Club. Um, that's now become quite a big development, which if you've been around that area, you've seen it coming up pretty quickly. The little orange box there is the site uh, that we're building on, and um, might be a bit clearer that way. So it is one of those developments where everything's packed in pretty tight. Not necessarily the greatest site to choose for a um, energy efficient house, but it's the kind of site that is available to most people these days. So it's what is being built there. Um, I should point out that we don't have a client. This is something that was instigated by our boss to just see if it could be done. Um, so there's no other 10 star projects that we know of in South Australia. So this is our uh, site. It's 10 metres wide at the frontage, which is over to the west and 31 metres deep. So it's not huge, 310 square metres, um, which, you know, that's about the size of a lot of houses. Um, it does have its longest face to the north, but of course there's not a house there, so that had to be taken into consideration. Um, before the site was purchased, it was confirmed that that house would only be single storey, otherwise this might have been difficult. Um, the other thing, if I go to the floor plan, um, one of the requirements of the development was that there was off-street parking and a reverse reversing bay. Um, I guess because it's a, quite a busy street, uh, they wanted to keep it that way. So that's limited the amount of site that's actually a, available for the house and um, any outdoor space. It's a three-bedroom house uh, with an open living area um, and some outdoor space kind of the size of a lot of houses we're seeing these days. Um, and just moving forward, these are the elevations. So the west elevation is the street frontage. Uh, north um, is quite open and can be closed as well. And just quickly moving around, the, the south boundary is on the, sorry, the south wall is on the boundary uh, right up against the house next door, which we're also building. Uh, so that's made things interesting. Um, just looking at how this kind of works uh, in a section here, the summer solstice, we're seeing very little solar penetration. 
Um, ideally, we, I should have modelled this with something growing on that pergola there, which is the intention to have a deciduous vine. Uh, but at least we can see that in the winter solstice, we're getting good solar penetration. Uh, the house was modelled in uh, first rate five. To, this is just a screenshot. I've never used this software, so I don't know what that even means. I just thought I'd show you. <coughs> but at the bottom, you can see 10 stars. So I think that's good. Um, this is just to give you an indication of what 10 stars theoretically means. Uh, if you look at that uh, six star there, which is slowly becoming a bit of a standard, uh, that's got an energy usage of 96 millijoule, uh, megajoules <laughs> per metre squared per year. 10 star takes it right down to three. Um, and just because I had nowhere else to put it, I just put a note here that we're trying to achieve 10 point, uh, R10.6 in the roof and R4.5 in the walls to achieve that. Um, and again, this is all just from the modelling. We'll wait and see if it works in reality. Uh, if you look at this temperature profile, June 17 to June 23, the outdoor temperature fluctuates as per the red line there. Uh, the temperatures in bedroom one and bedroom two, as you see across the top there, are quite stable within a relatively comfortable zone. So that's what the modelling has showed us will happen. And similarly on the other side there, uh, the temperature in the living room for most of the year sits between 20 and 24 degrees. Uh, so again, this is just in the software. It doesn't account for ventilation and air movement and ceiling fans and that kind of thing. Uh, it, well, it doesn't account for that very well. So. Um, this is our typical external wall construction. Um, again, we are trying to achieve 10 star. That, I gotta, I'm going to emphasize that 10 star was the goal. That was the whole point of building this house, just to see what, how it could be done. Um, but at the same time, we've tried to apply passive house principles along the way and combine the two, which has caused some interesting dilemmas here and there. Uh, so, it's, so this is the exterior where I'm standing. Uh, with the brick to the interior, so uh, and then moving to the roof, and I'm sorry that that's just such a crap diagram. I did a much better version of it today, but you know. Um, so we've got carbon steel roof sheet uh, with a foil face insulation blanket sitting under that. Uh, that rests on the um, on the truss, and through here is our airtight layer in the uh, roof space, which is an uh, OSB3 layer. Um, and under that, we have a service layer, which has insulation in it as well. I just haven't shown it there. Um, and that, that truss layer through here is filled uh, with superfill blow-in insulation. Um, and that's what those three layers of insulation through there are what get us a 10.6. Um, and it's one of those things that we've had to work through with the builders. Um, the builders we're working with are very keen to move into the space of sustainable design and construction. Um, and so we're having to coach them on some of these things because that's not how you would normally do a roof. Um, it's not necessarily how you have to do a roof either, but it's just the way this one's come, up, come to be. Um, air tightness, I'm glad I that Jackson and Brett talked about this kind of stuff because I don't have to say too much about it. Um, but we've actually had Jackson on site giving us some advice about this too. Um, so the air tightness in plan is continuous all the way around. Uh, it's taped into the window frames and all the openings like that. Uh, I should mention that this house has triple glazed aluminium thermally broken framed windows, uh, which, you know, is easily the most expensive part of the house. Um, but that's what we've got there. And then in section, that air tightness is uh, wrapped around the whole building. That area dotted in blue is actually uh, an area within the airtight zone uh, that is not exposed. It's, it becomes our service layer. So we can run electrical and hydraulics uh, through that space and also the mechanical where required. 
Um, again, I'm glad that these guys talked about this, so I won't say much about it. Um, that basically one of the challenges with a, an airtight, airtight house like this is avoiding condensation in our walls and that kind of thing. And um, so we're trying to get uh, our walls to breathe a bit. Um, and Jackson was about to give up on us when he saw how we designed these walls. Um, so we've sort of modified things along the way and we also have uh, heat recovery ventilation to assist us with that, but also in terms of making it a healthy and happy place to be. Uh, there's a lot of thermal mass here. Um, we've got 100, uh, what is it? 52 cubic metres of brick. The entire interior of the external walls is brick and 305 cubic metres of concrete slab. So a lot of mass there. Um, there's a lot of technology we've incorporated too. Um, in part, this is for our own interest. We've put a lot of monitoring into this place because we know what the software predicts. We want to see what it actually does. Um, so you know, this is an experiment for us as a company. Um, so we can uh, gather all of that information for our own use, plus it feeds into the home automation system uh, the home automation system operates um, such things as the uh, high-level windows. It can open and close those as required. Uh, it'll operate the external Venetian blinds as well um, and other such things. I've, for some reason, written hydronic heating on there. We don't have hydronic heating in this house. We do on the house next door, which has a similar system. Um, so I won't talk about HRV because that's been covered already by our friendly friends over there. Uh, it's got lots of electric stuff in it uh, because we're keeping it nice and clean. And this is not just a blatant plug here, but the fact is we've done this in partnership with a lot of people. Like I said, we don't have a client as such. We don't have a buyer for the house. We've just partnered with a lot of people to make this happen. Uh, so we look forward to seeing you on Sunday, those of you who are coming along to visit it and it's in construction at the moment hence no photos uh, so feel free to come past even if you're not booked in because you can see all the bits and pieces hanging out before we put all cladding all over the place thank you very much thank you.